It has been storming in Athens for weeks, and the rain will not stop. The king and queen of the fairies are embroiled in a lover's quarrel. Their discord causes them to suck up the contents of the sea and hurl it at one another. Titania, the beautiful queen of the fairies, holds in her charge a sweet baby boy, half human, half fairy, whom Oberon, the king of the fairies, wishes to keep as his very own servant. They fight bitterly over the child, and as the floodwaters soak the human world, unrest plagues the people of Athens. Oh! oh. <laughs> Relent, oh. sweet Hermia! And Lysander, yield thy crazy title to thy certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. How now, my love? Why is your cheek so pale? Oh, cross! Oh, spite! To choose love by another's eyes. If I refuse to wed Demetrius, my father will have me put to death. The course of true love never did run smooth. Hear me, Hermia. I have a rich widowed aunt who lives some distance away from Athens. There may I marry thee, and to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, leave your father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood there will I stay for thee. Oh, oh my good Lysander, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. Keep your promise, love. Well, look, here comes Helena. Oh, oh God, speed, fair Helena. Whither away? Call you me fair? Demetrius loves your fair. Oh, happy fair. Oh, I frown upon him. Yet he loves me still. The more I hate him, the more he follows me. <laughs> the more I love him, the more he hateth me. Oh, take comfort. He no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Oh. Helen, to you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, through Athens' gates, have we devised to steal. And in the wood, Lysander and myself shall meet, and thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Oh, farewell, sweet playfellow. Lysander, until tomorrow, deep midnight. I will, my Hermia. Helena, at you. As you on him, Demetrius, dote on you. <laughs> How happy some, or other some can be. Through Athens I'm thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. I will go. Tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But herein mean I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. Helena tells Demetrius of Hermia and Lysander's secret plan to escape into the forest and marry. Demetrius is sure that if he follows Hermia into the wood, he will prevent her from marrying Lysander. So, the next evening, after dark, Hermia and Lysander meet in the wood. Demetrius goes there in hot pursuit of Hermia, while a lovesick Helena follows close behind.
thou now, spirit? Whither wander you? Over hill, over dale, through bush, through briar, over park, over pale, through flood, through fire. I do wander everywhere, and I serve the fairy queen. <laughs> the king doth keep his revels here tonight. Take heed, the queen come not within his sight. Titania has stolen a lovely little child, half fairy and half human, and she keeps him always with her. Jealous Oberon wants the child to be his servant. But Titania refuses to part with him. And now they never meet in grove or green, by fountain clear or spangled starlight sheen, but they do square that all their elves for fear creep into acorn cups and hide them there. Either I mistake your shape, or else you are that shrewd and knavish sprite called Robin Goodfellow. Are you he? Thou speakest aright. <laughs> I am that merry wanderer of the night. But room, fairy. <laughs> here comes Oberon. And here my mistress. Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. What? Jealous Oberon. Fairies, skip hence. Terry, rash wanton. Am not I thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. His mother was a votress of my order, but she, being mortal, did die. And for her sake do I rear up her boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. <sighs> How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me and I will spare your haunts. Give me that boy and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away! Well, go thy way. My gentle Puck, come hither. There is a little western flower, before milk white, now purple with Cupid's wound. Maidens call it love in idleness. Fetch me that flower. The juice of it, on sleeping eyelids laid, will make or man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb. I'll put a girdle round the earth in 40 minutes. Having once this juice, I'll watch Titania when she is asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing then she, waking, looks upon, be it lion, bear, or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And before I take this charm from off her sight, I'll make her render up the child to me. But who comes here? I am invisible. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? The one I'll slay, the other slayeth me. Get thee gone, follow me no more. Do I not in plainest truth tell you I do not, nor cannot, love you? You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant. I am your spaniel, Demetrius. Use me, but as your spaniel, spurn me, strike me, neglect me, lose me, only give me leave, unworthy as I am, to follow you. Let me go. 
I'll run from thee and leave thee to the mercy of the wild beasts. I'll follow thee and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Fare thee well, nymph. Hast thou the flower there? Aye, there it is. I pray thee, give it me. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where oxlips and the nodding violet grows. Mm. There sleeps Titania, some time of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight. And with the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. <laughs> Take thou some of it, and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. <sighs> Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on. And look thou, meet me ere. The first cock crows. Fear not, my lord. Your servant shall do so. As Puck, Oberon's trusted servant, flies off to place the love juice in Demetrius's eye, Oberon seeks his fairy queen in her sleeping grove to do the same. The scheming king hopes that he may steal the changeling boy as the effects of the love potion distract Titania. Come, now a roundel and a fairy song. Sing me now asleep. What thou seest when thou dost wake, do it for thy true love take. When thou wakest, it is thy dear. Wake when some vile thing is near.
the love-struck Athenians, Lysander and Hermia, have lost themselves among the dark trees. They seek a safe spot to rest a while. Fair love, you faint with wandering in the wood. We'll rest here, Hermia, if you think it good. Oh, be it so, Lysander. Oh, <laughs> nay, good Lysander. For my sake, do not lie so near. Such separation becomes a virtuous bachelor and a maid. <laughs> so far be distant. And good night, sweet friend. <laughs> Here is my bed. Sleep, give thee all his rest. Through the forest have I gone, but Athenian found I none on whose eyes I might approve this flower's force in stir and love. Night and silence. <gasps> Who is here? Weeds of Athens he doth wear. Mm, this is he. My master said despised the Athenian maid. And here the maiden, sleeping sound on the dank and dirty ground. Pretty soul. She durst not lie near this lack love, this kill courtesy. Churl, upon thine eyes I throw all the power this charm doth owe. So awake when I am gone, for I must now to Oberon. Sweet Demetrius! Hence! And do not haunt me thus! Oh, stay! On thy peril! I alone will go! Oh, I'm out of breath in this fond chase, and the more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. <laughs> Happy is Hermia! Wheresoe'er she lies, for she hath blessed and attractive eyes. How came her eyes so bright? <laughs> <laughs> Not with salt tears. If so, my eyes are oftener washed than hers. No, no. I am as ugly as a bear. For beasts that meet me run away for fear. But who is here? <gasps> Lysander! On the ground. Dead or asleep. Lysander? If you live, good sir, awake. And run through fire I will for thy sweet sake. Transparent Helena, nature shows art that through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? Oh, how fit a word is that vile name to perish on my sword. Oh, do not say so, Lysander, say not so. What though he love your Hermia? Hermia still loves you. Then be content. Uh, content with Hermia? No! I do repent the tedious minutes I with her have spent. Not Hermia, but Helena I love, who will not change a raven for a dove. Uh, wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve this scorn? It's not enough. It's not enough, young man, that I did never know, nor never can deserve a sweet look from Demetrius' eye. But you must flout my insufficiency. But fare you well. Perforce, I must confess I thought you lord of more true gentleness. She sees not Hermia. Hermia, sleep thou there, and never mayest thou come Lysander near. And all my powers address your love and might to honor Helen and to be her knight. Help me, Lysander, help me. Oh, I me for pity. What a dream was here. Lysander! What? Removed? Lysander! What? Out of hearing? Gone? No sound? No word? No? Then I perceive you are not nigh. Either death or you, I'll find immediately. Mm. 
where are we going? Uh, yeah. Does, yeah. Does anybody know where we're going? Yes, you tripped over. Two, oh, yeah. We've done that I'm same hungry. Time. Did anybody bring any trail mix? No, I did. Oh, uh, sure. Nothing. Nothing. No. We need to. I'm first. My sandwich is. I know. I can use a ham sandwich right now. Wait a minute. We'll eat. This looks. This looks like the perfect place. Yes. Yes. Hey, no, no. Come back here. Wow. Okay. Are we all met? Oh, Pat, Pat. Here's a marvelous, convenient place for rehearsal of the play. The most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. Oh. We will do it in action as we will do it for the king and queen on their wedding day at night. Is all our company here? Uh, you were best to call them generally, man by man, according to the script. That, here is the scroll of every man's name, which is thought fit through Athens to play in our interlude. First, good Peter Quince, mm -hmm. say what the play treats on. Then read the names of the actors by the scrolls. Oh, yeah, well, Masters, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. spread yourselves. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Answer as I call you. Nick Bottom the Weaver. Ready! Name what part I am for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. Ooh, what is Pyramus? A lover? Or a tyrant. Oh, a lover <laughs> who kills himself most gallant for love. Oh, that will ask some tears in the true performing of it. <laughs> if I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will move <laughs> stars. The Francis flute. The bellows minder. Uh, uh, here, Peter Quince. A uh, flute. You must take Thisbe on you. Uh, what is uh, Thisbe? Um, a, a wandering knight? Oh, it is the lady that Pyramus is to love. <laughs> <laughs> Nay, faith. Let not me play a woman. I have a beard coming. Oh, well, that's all one. You shall play it in a mask, and you may speak. As small as you will. I, mean, I uh, may uh, hide uh, my uh, face. Let me uh, play Thisbe too. Uh, no, I'll uh, speak uh, in a monstrous little voice. No, no. Disney. Uh, Disney. Tis, tis be. Hi, uh, uh, Pyramus, uh, my lover dear, uh, thy Thisbe dear, uh, uh, and lady. Uh, no, 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 no. You, you, you oh. must play Pyramus and and flute. You uh, Thisbe. We'll proceed. Mm -hmm. Robin Starveling, the tailor. Here, Peter Quince. Robin Starveling, you must play Thisbe's mother. Tom Snout, the tinker. Here, Peter Quince. Uh, you, Pyramus's father. Myself, Thisbe's father. Snug, the joiner. You, the lion's part. And I hope here is a play fitted. Uh, ha have you the lion's part written? Pray you, if it be... Give it me, for I am slow of study. Oh, no, no, you may do it extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. Oh, 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 oh let, let me play the lion, too. I will roar, then I will make the king say, let him roar again. Let him mm -hmm. roar again. And you should do it too terribly. You would fright the queen and the ladies. And that were enough to hang us all. Peter Quince. Uh, what, what sayest thou, Bully Bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that'll never please. First... Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself. I believe we must leave the killing out. Will not the ladies be afeard of the lion? I fear it, I promise you. Nay, you must name his name, and he himself must speak through, saying thus, or to the same defect, Ladies, hmm. or fair ladies, I would wish you, uh, or no, no, I no, would no, request no, you no, are... No. I would entreat you Ooh. not to fear, not to tremble, no. 
I am a man as other men are. I am Snug the Joiner. Well, it shall be so. <laughs> uh, but there is two hard things. That is, to bring the moonlight into a chamber. For, you know, Pyramus and mm. Thisbe meet by moonlight. One must come in with a bush of thorns and a lantern and say he comes to present the person of moonshine. <laughs> well, then there is another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber. Uh, for Pyramus and Thisbe did talk through the chink in a wall. <laughs> well, you can never bring in a wall. What say you, Bottom? Hmm. Um, some man or other must present wall. And let him have some plaster or loam or rough cast about him. Well, come. Rehearse your part. What hempen homespuns have we swaggering here? So near the cradle of the fairy queen. This be the flower of odious savors sweet. Uh, <coughs> odorous. Odorous. Odor savor sweet. <laughs> so hath thy breath, thy dearest Thisbe dear. But hark, a voice. Stay thou but here a while. Stranger Pyramus than e'er played here. <laughs> And by and by I will to thee appear. Uh, oh, monstrous. Oh, strange. <laughs> we are hunted. <laughs> Pray, <laughs> Master Spry, <laughs> Master Spry. <laughs> Why do they run away? This is a knavery of them to make me a feared. To make an ass of me. <laughs> to fright me, if they could. But I will not stir from this place. I will walk up and down. And I will sing that they shall hear that I am not afraid. The... Cock so black of hue with orange tawny bill. <laughs> the throstle with his note so true. The wren with little quill. <laughs> <gasps> what angel wakes me from my flowery bed? The finch, the sparrow, and the lark. The plain song cuckoo gray, whose notes full many a man doth mark, and dares not answer nay. <laughs> I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear is much enamored of thy note. <laughs> so is mine eye enthralled to thy shape. And thy fair virtue's force, perforce, doth move me to say, to swear, I love thee. Oh, methinks, mistress, you, you should have little reason for that. <laughs> and yet, to say the truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. <laughs> Thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. Uh, 
<laughs> Not so neither, but if I had wit enough to get out of this wood, I have enough to serve my own turn. <laughs> out of this wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate, and I do love thee. Therefore go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee. Peas blossom, cobweb, moth, and mustard seed. Ready? And I. And I. And I. Where, Where shall, shall we, we go? go? Be kind to this gentleman. <laughs> Nod to him else and do him courtesies. Hail, mortal. Hail. 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 <laughs> I cry your worship's mercy, hardly. <laughs> Oh, I beseech your worship's uh, name. Cobweb. Well, I shall desire a view more acquaintance, good master Cobweb. <laughs> your name, honest gentleman. Peas Blossom. Good master Peas Blossom, I shall desire a more acquaintance too. Your name, I beseech you, sir. <laughs> Uh, mustard seed. Good <laughs> mustard, mustard seed. I desire your acquaintance. Good master, mustard seed. <laughs> Come, wait upon him. Lead him to my bower. Tie up my lover's <laughs> tongue. Bring him silently. <laughs> Here comes my messenger. How now, mad spirit? My mistress with a monster is in love. <laughs> Titania waked and straight away loved an ass. <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> falls out better than I could devise. <laughs> but hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eyes with the love juice? As I did bid thee do. Mm-hmm. I took him sleeping. That is finished, too. And the Athenian woman by his side, that when he waked of force, she must be eyed. Oh, why I rebuke you, him that loves you so? Lay breath so bitter on your bitter foe. Now I but chide, but I should use thee worse. For thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. It cannot be, but thou hast murdered him. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead for aught that I can tell. I pray thee, tell me then that he is well. And if I could, what should I get there for? Oh, a privilege never to see me more. Oh, and from thy hated presence part I so. See me no more, whether he be dead or no. Yeah, oh. Uh. There's no following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while, I shall remain. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite, and laid the love juice on some true love's sight. About the wood go swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens look thou find. By some illusion, see thou bring her here. I'll charm his eyes against she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than arrow from Tartar's bow. Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery, sink an apple of his eye. When his love he doth espy, let her shine as gloriously as Venus or the sky. <clears throat> Captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand. And the youth mistook by me, pleading for a lover's fee. <laughs> Shall we their fond pageant see? <laughs> Lord, what fools these mortals be. Stand aside. The noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then will two at once woo one. That must needs be sport alone. Ah, and those things do best please me that befall preposterously. 
How can these things seem scorn to you, bearing the badge of faith to prove them true? You do advance your cunning more and more. When truth kills truth, oh, devilish holy fray, these vows are Hermia's. I had no judgment when to her I swore. Nor none in my mind now. Demetrius loves Hermia, and he loves not you. Uh. Oh. Oh. Helena, goddess, nymph, perfect, <laughs> divine. To what, my love, shall I compare thine eye? Oh, how ripe and show thy lips, those cherries, tempting grow. Oh, oh. spite, oh. <laughs> I see you all are bent to set against me for your merriment. If you were men, as men you are in show, you wouldn't use a gentle lady so. You both are rivals and love Hermia, and now both rivals to mock Helena. Oh, Lysander, why unkindly didst thou leave me so? Why should he stay whom love doth press to go? Oh. What love could press Lysander from my side? Fair Helena, who more in guilds the <gasps> night than all yon fiery o's and eyes of light. Oh, you speak not as you think. It cannot be. Oh, she is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. I understand not what you mean by this. Helen, I love thee. By my life, I do. Yeah, I say I love thee more than he can do. Oh, excellent. If thou say so, withdraw and prove it too. C uh, quick, uh, come. Uh, Lysander, where to tends all this? Hang off, thou cat, <gasps> thou burr. Oh. Vile thing, let loose, or I will shake thee from me like a serpent. Do you not jest? Well, yes, sooth, and so do you. Be certain, nothing truer, tis no jest, that I do hate thee and love Helena. <gasps> oh, me, you juggler, you thief of love. What, have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? <laughs> Fine, faith. Have you no modesty, you counterfeit? <laughs> you puppet, you! <gasps> puppet? Why so? Aye, that way goes the game. <gasps> she hath made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height. Because I am so dwarfish and so low? How low am I, thou painted maypole? Speak, how low am I? I am not yet so low, but that my nails can reach unto thine eyes. Oh, oh, I pray you, though you mock me. Gentlemen, let her not hurt me. Let her not strike me. You perhaps may think, because she is lower than myself, that oh. I can match her. Lower? Hark again? Good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. I evermore did love you, Hermia. Be not afraid, she shall not harm thee, Helena. No, sir, she shall not. Oh, when she is angry, she's keen and shrewd. She was a vixen when she went to school, and though she be but little, oh. she is fierce. Little again! Nothing but low and little? Let me come to her! Get you oh. gone, you dwarf, oh. you minimus, you bead, you oh. acorn! Now, follow, if thou darest, to try who's right, of thine or mine, is most in Helena. Follow? Nay, I shall go with thee cheek by jowl. No longer. I no longer stay in your cursed company. Your hands than mine are quicker for a fray. My legs are longer, though, to run away. I, I am amazed and know not what to say. This is thy negligence. Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. Robin, overcast the night and lead these testy rivals so astray as one come not within another's way until they sleep. Then crush this herb into Lysander's eye. When they awake, all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless vision. 
I'll to my queen, and then I will her charmed eye release from monster's view, and all things shall be peace. Up and down. Up and down. I will lead them up and down. I am feared in field and town goblin. Lead them up and down. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now! I'll whip thee with a rod, coward, why comest thou not? <sighs> Ever I thy face by daylight see. <sighs> Oh, long and tedious night. Sleep, steal me a while from mine own company. Oh, oh never so weary, never so in woe. I can no further crawl, no further go. Oh, here, here I will rest me till the break of day. On the ground, sleep sound. I'll apply to your eye, gentle lover, remedy. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye. Jack shall have Jill, naught shall go ill. The man shall have his mare again, and all shall be well. Come, sit thee down upon this flowery bed, and I will kiss thy large, fair ears, my gentle joy. Oh, scratch my head, Peace Blossom, and... Where's Monsieur Cobweb? Ready. Good Monsieur. Scratch. For methinks I am marvelous hairy about the face. And if my hair do but tickle me, <laughs> I'm a scratch. Sleep thou. Fairies, be gone. And be always away. Oh, how I love thee! How I dote on thee! Welcome, good Robin. Seest thou this sweet sight? Her dotage now I do begin to pity. Gentle Buck, take this transformed scalp from off the head of this Athenian swain. But first, I will release the fairy queen. Be as thou wast wont to be. See as thou wast wont to see. Now, my Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. <gasps> my Oberon, what visions have I seen? Methought I was enamored of an ass. There lies your love. to pass. Oh, how well, mine eyes do loathe his visage now. Silence a while. <laughs> Robin, take off his head. Come, my lord, and in our flight, tell 
tell me how it came this night that I sleeping here was found with these mortals on the ground. The king and future queen of Athens discover the sleeping lovers in the forest. What nymphs are these? My lord, this is Hermia here asleep, and this Lysander, this Demetrius is, this Helena. Hmm. Good morrow, friends. I pray you all stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. How comes this gentle concord in the world? I cannot truly say how I came here. Ah. Of this discourse we more will hear anon. Away with us, to Athens! Why, then, we are awake. Let us follow him. And by the way, let us recount our dreams. Sir, I ho, bit of quince, flute, snout the tinker. God's my life stolen hence and left me asleep. I have had. A most rare vision. I have had a dream, past the wit of man to say what dream it was. Me thought I was. <laughs> there is no man can tell what. Me thought I was, and me thought I had. But man is but a patched fool if he will offer to say what me thought I had. I will get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream. It shall be called Bottom's Dream, because it hath no bottom. And I will sing it at the latter end of the play. Before the king! <laughs> Bottom returns to Athens to perform with his fellow players before the king and queen on their wedding day. The lovers, now reunited with their true partners, join in the marriage celebration.
approach, sir, and begin your play. <coughs> Gentles, perchance you wonder at this show, but wonder on till truth make all things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you would know. This beauteous lady, Thisbe, is certain. This man with lime and rough cast doth present wall, that vile wall which did these lovers sunder, and through walls chink, poor souls they are content to whisper. This man with lanthorn, dog, and bush of thorn presenteth moonshine, this grisly beast, which lion height by name... Pyramus draws near the wall. Silence. <clears throat> oh, grimlocked night. Oh, night. With hue so black. Oh, night. Whichever art one day is not. O oh, night, O oh, night. Alack, alack, alack. I fear my Thisbe's promises forgot. And thou, O oh, wall, O oh, sweet, O oh, lovely wall. <coughs> thou, O oh, wall! The sweet old lovely wall! Show me thy chink to blink through with mine eye. Uh, but what see I? No thisbe do I see. Oh, wicked wall! Cursed be thy stones for thus deceiving me. At deceiving me is Thisbe's cue. She's to enter now, and I am to spy her through the wall. You shall see. Yonder she comes. <clears throat> oh, oh, wall! My cherry lips have often kissed thy stones. I see a voice. Now will I to the chink to spy, and I can hear my Thisbe's face. Thisbe! My love, thou art my love. I think. Kiss me through the whole of this vile wall. I kissed the wall's hole, not your lips at all. Wilt thou at Ninny's tomb meet me straight away? Tide. Ninus tomb. Tide life, tide death, I'll come without delay. I am one snug the joiner. Roar! Uh, all I have to say is this lantern is the moon. I, the man in the moon, this thorn bush, uh, my thorn bush, and this dog, my dog. This is old Ninny's tomb. Ninus, Ninus. Where is my love? Roar! Sweet moon, I thank thee for thy sunny beams. I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright. <gasps> but mark, what dreadful dole is here? Eyes, do you see? How can it be? Oh, dainty duck! Oh, dear! Thy mantle got what? Stained with blood! Oh, fates! Come! Come! Cut bread and thrum! Quail! Crush! Conclude and quell! Come, tears, confound. Out, sword! And wound the Papa Pyramus! Ay, that left pap where heart doth hop. Thus die I! Thus! Thus! 
us. Now I am dead. Now I am fled. My soul is in the sky. Tongue, lose thy light. Moon, take thy flight. Now, die. 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 Die! Tisby, Tisby. <clears throat> Asleep, my love? What? Dead, my love? Oh, Pyramus, arise! Speak! Speak! Quite. Dead, dead. A tomb must cover thy sweet eyes. Tongue, not a word. Come, trusty sword. C -c Come, blade. My breast improve. <laughs> And farewell, <clears throat> friends. Thus, this be ends. Adieu, adieu, adieu. Uh, ow, ow. Come on, Lizzie. Move over. Get back, get back. Good, 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 good. good. <clears throat> Wonderful. Uh, will it please you to see the epilogue or to hear a Bergamask dance? No, epilogue, I pray you, for your play needs no excuse. But come, your Bergamask, let your epilogue alone.
lovers to bed. Tis almost fairy time. We shadows have offended. Think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. And this weak and idle theme no more yielding than a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest pup, if we have unearned luck now to scape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long, else the puck a liar call. So, good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends. <laughs>